to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I've got a game that I played a, a friend of mine, a neighbor of mine, and it shows some cool ideas from what I was thinking during this game is I wanted to use as many of Jeremy Silman's ideas as I knew how to and then I wanted to imitate my favorite grandmaster and do in this game what he did in his when I realized what helps make Alakin's chess attacks so strong. I'm playing the black pieces I'm doing a Dutch defense, and this is just a friendly game. We're kind of talking and goofing off and all that jazz. And I decided, well, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try like crazy to do what I can to incorporate some ideas with Jeremy Silman using the Dutch defense. So. He is really focused on doing wing play already. On the other hand, uh, the center isn't exactly uh, wide open. <clears throat> Man, I'm kind of catching a cold. I hope my voice is clear. If I crackle and cackle and sneeze snot all over, I apologize, but holy cow. He being kiddos, his bishop wants to get the long diagonal right through the heart of my position. This is the downside of the Dutch defense is you close off your uh, center and you really have a tough time with your queen bishop because that's my bad bishop, right? It, it's a little bit more of a cramped position and it's, it's harder to fully develop your, uh, your position with all your pieces. But that's the downside. The good side is the good side is it's a great defense. He's already flipping his pawn up here, trying to go for my queen side. It's interesting how Silman says. One thing I noticed is <clears throat> in this game, Silman says where your pawns point is where you want to play, and yet he's pushing the queen side. Of course, then all he has to do is bump that pawn up, and it says go that way. So. We'll see what he does, won't we? I decided to stop this right now because I did not want him coming in and wrecking my position on the queen side. I had other ideas, so to speak, right? And he went, let's see, brings out his bishop. And here, this is one of the, uh, when I was looking at Alakin's games, one of the things that really struck me was how powerful his attack was when he ended up getting both knights on the same side of the board. And it really didn't matter which board. King side, queen side, or the center side. <laughs> it didn't matter where he put them. When Alakin put his knights together and used them as a tag team, holy cow, it was fireworks. And I thought, hey, if he can do it, I can at least try. I can at least imitate him, right? So I'm going to do this. It's hard in the Dutch to develop this knight out on the queen side. The center is not going to be uh, broken through into an attack on my king. So my theme that I always, that I sometimes usually push of develop every piece quickly isn't as urgent in a position where there's a lot of pawns closing off the center. So if you need to put a piece in a certain spot on board, go right ahead and do so. I have seen, and see this is part of the fun of uh, reading the Grandmaster games because we see them do this all the time and it doesn't seem to hurt the guy who won the game uh, if he moved his bishop four different times in order to get his bishop at a certain key spot, or a knight, or a rook. Oh boy, I've seen games where they manipulate the rooks for eight moves before they get the rook where they want. So, it's... It, there are no hard and fast rules in chess is what I'm telling you. So, 
I'm trying to justify myself desperately for what I'm about to do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you idiot. You blue-man idiot. Well, he bumps his bishop back down to e2. Now, I brought my knight here, and I thought I'd like to go here. So notice where I'm bringing my knight. He brings the rook up. Now, that's interesting. The other advantage of the Dutch, if you manipulate your pawns right, and I have, he, see, it, he, uh, he doesn't have any way to develop this knight much either, right? And this knight's only going to be able to go to here. Uh, I, I'm going to block this off here just shortly, I'll show you. But before I do, I bring my knight up to here. Now I've got my knights together. Now, I'm trying to develop uh, using the principles of Silman and yet imitate Alakine here, right? Imitate Alakine. Yes, I know, it's sheer arrogance. I mean with the one idea of putting the knights together in a game and attacking a king side. He hasn't castled. I'm going to go after him. Although in the Dutch, it can sometimes be tricky if the center is kind of clogged up. So, I mean, I say I'm going to go after him, but... So he bumps up the g3, and I'm going to castle. I want to castle. And he does get his knight up here, but, you know, he, he, it, it doesn't, that doesn't help him a whole lot. I want to bring up my bishop. Now look at this. Now he wants to... I don't think he's going to castle anymore because of the way he's playing his pawns. I mean, there's no point in castling at this point. Although being in the center isn't too bad. He's kept his pawns here, although there's weaknesses absolutely everywhere around the king. I, I mean, the whole, the whole king area is weak in the center. So we shall see. He, he went to g4. I went ahead and took it. I said, I'm going to uh, take that, and then the bishop takes g4. So he's trying to get a uh, somewhat of a developed uh, bishop with a little bit more oomph. That's his good bishop. Now at this point, I realized, hey... That's his good bishop, and this is my bad bishop. I'm going to go ahead and bump this pawn up, hit the, hit the uh, F pawn, and if he doesn't trade bishops this time, then I will. I'm happy to trade that bad bishop because of my pawn structure in this game. And he traded me. And I thought, well, hot dog. That's good. I don't mind that at all. That's wonderful. If you can trade off your bad bishop in the Dutch, uh, by all means, do so. So now I'm left without the bishop pair. He's left without the bishop pair, but look at the difference in the uh, positions here. My bishop is somewhat bad, but it's going to be opened up potentially. His bishop is absolutely locked in, unless he bumps that pawn up. He's got the rook coming over across the file, but he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have a lot of he's he's been wanting to play on the queen side, and that's what else I noticed too. I said, okay, one, I've got both my knights on the king side. Two, I've got a partial file here. Yes, I'd be hitting granite here, but I've got tension here. I've got a potential to break through with my rook here. Three, I have. Uh, my, my rooks are connected and I'm castled. And four, my bishop here is better than his bishop. His bishop is locked down. So at this point, I was feeling pretty good, you know. I said, okay, okay, not bad, not bad. Well, he, he helps me here. Now what he's doing, see, he helped me open my, my file which is pure bonus in my opinion, but he does give me a real good tactic of forking a bishop and a knight. However, I mean, it's not a deadly fork, but that is a tactic, forking with your pawn, but in this case, I can simply take it with my bishop. With tempo, I think, because now I'm hitting 
down here. I'm going to make sure, see this bishop's unprotected. I'm going to make sure that pawn doesn't move. In other words, look at the difference of the bishops here. Really, I'm very happy with this position. Look at the position of the knights here. Sincerely, I'm very happy where my knights are compared to his. Uh, so my minor piece, my minor pieces are better. My rooks are connected. He does have a bit more space on the queen side, but there is nothing to do because he can't come here with his knight. He can't come here with his knight. So it was almost a waste of time for him to try to go to this side. So you see that? So I'm happy at this point. I'm doing okay, right? So, uh, now that I've been blabbing my head off, okay, bishop took d5, and then he comes up to d3. So I'm, I'm facing a solid flanks of pawns, and the rook cuts clear across the, the center here. However, I thought, you know, Alakin also had extremely strong chess games when he not only put both of his knights on the same board, uh, at the same side, but when he also did that with his rooks. And that's an open file. And that's an open file to the king, across from the king. Now I call it an open file. It's a partial file. It's open for me because my pawn is not obstructing my rook. That can be a target, right? So now I am sincerely happy with what I'm seeing here. At this point, I've gotten real lucky. I'm doing okay. He bumps up h3. It's obvious by now he better not castle. If he castles, it's suicide. I've got him. In fact, I think I've got him anyway. Um, I, I'm getting really, really excited here. Here's my tactic. This is one reason why I wanted to show you this game. I put the knight right there, and you go, yeah, wait a minute, dude. Uh, aren't you just giving the knight away? What if he takes you? Right? Was that a wise move? Yes, it was. In my opinion, it helped. I want as many pieces into this attack as I can get, but see, that gives me this check on a fort to the rook. Right? That's a fun tactic to keep in mind, see? So, I figured if he's going to take the knight, then let him take the knight. But in the meantime, both knights are together. I can start this knight coming down into, into here, Go and check and bumping out the king, or go to here and swap out the knights if I get this knight out first so that I've got the rook. I'm on a real good attack. In my opinion, I thought I was very, very happy with this at this point. Knight comes up to f3 to try to defend or exchange off or whatever you can do because my position here has gotten extremely strong, in my opinion. So I thought, okay... Let's give him some pepper on the steak. Let's go check with my bishop. I want to try to get as many pieces in as I can. I have a, uh, an opportunity here that I think is going to be really fun if I play this right, if I don't mess it up. King f1. I thought, all right, okay, let's think this through. I would like to pin that knight to the king because... That would mean I can take that knight, right? What's one of the better ways I can pin that knight? Queen f5 right there. So now my, I know his knight cannot move because his king would be in check. And therefore, I know my knight can take his knight without any repercussions because his queen is not going to retake my knight because then he'll lose the queen. So... I'm thinking at this point I've got him. I I really I have this guy. And then he does this. Boink. <laughs> and I go, holy cow, holy cow. What the heck? What do I do? What do I do? I brought
brought my queen over to here thinking I can still pin his knight, but this time to the queen. Because when, when Alakin attacks, uh, he tries to really put a lot of pieces on the side he's attacking and just really try to find some combinations. And once he starts attacking, he really doesn't retreat very often, so he's really hitting it hard. So that's what I wanted to do. I thought, okay, I'll do another pin here. And then what's he do? Takes my cotton picking knight. Of course, duh. And I'm going, well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> now I now I don't want to take the knight, of course, because the queen will take the queen. I haven't moved this knight yet to give me a protection on the rook. This rook has a good spot to hit a pawn, but now my queen is is uh, being threatened, so what the heck. I thought, uh, well, I'm gonna, I want to keep the pressure on the king, so I will take the rook with the bishop. And now he starts moving his other knight. He's gonna obviously come over to here and try to get in there to help help get some central control. And now I went to knight e4. Now look at what I found. I have the angle. I have the wonderful pin on the knight to the queen, right? I also have two files. So I'm pinning the knight to the queen and what I saw my, uh, with the king across from my rook, you know, I'm thinking, gosh, my own knight's in the way, so at this point, get it out of the way, right? And I thought, well, that is not going to do a lot for me, but that will, because what I'm offering is the knight, and, and so I'm going to open up the file. And he took the knight. My figuring was if he took the knight, I have a pawn. And then I thought, but there's a better move. What I was trying to do was break through his center, break up his pawns, right? So I sat on my hands and I said, wait a minute. There is a better move here. That's okay, but why leave his knight? Why give him his knight? There's no point in that. Take his knight, put him in check. Absolutely, man. Kapow! And that, his queen can't take the rook. I'll simply take the uh, queen. So now I'm feeling really, really good, and I'm realizing, oh my gosh, I think I've got him. I think I've got him here. King's g3, and can you see now? Because of the open files, something both Alakin always utilized in his games when he was attacking, and something Silman says we must do, even a partial open file is very, very useful, right? So I bumped up here and went check. And he went to here, and I simply came down to there and checkmate. So while this isn't Grandmaster Chess, and it never will be because I'm never going to get to that caliber, but I'm having a lot of fun improving, I can state truly that what Silman has been saying in his book about the imbalance is my space advantage. You can certainly see how my space advantage on the king side materialized into a good attack, while his space advantage on the queen side didn't really amount to much. And I may be dreaming, and I don't know, maybe I'll be in for a rude awakening, but as I have been playing through the Grandmaster games, when they put more pieces on a side, it just seems to me like they have a better attacking chance. I think it's a matter of just statistics. If you have five pieces over here, you notice my opponent had three pieces over here. Now, he wasn't completely bereft of pieces over here, but the majority of his pieces, he was wanting to go on the queen side. Because I took 
the time to get my first night over here, I think I had the winning, I was able to put together the winning combination with, with, uh, with the attack. So there's your chess video. Thanks for watching. I had a fabulous winter solstice drumming ceremony I went to last night, December 21st. It was a hoot, man. They're fun. Christmas is on the way. Go get your shopping done. Drive safe. Don't be mad. Forget road rage. Road rage isn't worth it. We're in a hurry, but we're not in that big a hurry. It's only stuff anyway, right? You know what makes Christmas fun is not the stuff, but the process of giving it and seeing people really enjoy it and happy. That's where the fun is. So, Anyway, happy checkmating, happy chessercising. As my sensei says, yes. Give a bow, as they do in Buddhism. Aha, this is the gesture to recognize the sacred and the divine in everybody. So, there you go. And I will see you in the next chess video. Stick around. we got a lot more fun to do.